Well, here's something that you don't know. Eddie Ogden is the best cook in this whole dumb cook-off, and you know him. Hey, no arguments here. So, why didn't he win? Why isn't he holding up the trophy doing the Rocky dance? Check him out. Come on, check him out. He looks like a winner to me. <laughs> I feel you, man. <laughs> so, who wants to celebrate? Let's go get something to eat. Eddie Dogs? Yeah! Hey, what's up you guys? For this week, we're making Millionaire Shortbread, which has nothing to do with Eddie's million dollar cook-off, but it does have the word million in it, so it's relevant. So we're gonna start off with adding one fourth a cup of sugar, and we're gonna melt half a cup of butter because it's faster to mix if you're mixing by hand like me. While waiting for the butter to melt, take a sip of water to stay hydrated. We're gonna add the melted butter to our sugar and start mixing. As the butter cooled down, I got kind of a creamy consistency, which is what I was looking for, and once I was happy with it, I added one cup of flour. This mixture is going to be the base for our Millionaire Shortbread, so we're going to mix it until it has an overall clumpy and sandy texture. Now you may be wondering, why did I use a whisk for this part? And that's a question that I have too, but you know what? It worked. I got the consistency that I was looking for, and it turned out great. Preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Line up a baking pan with some parchment paper. The baking pan that I'm using for this is a bit larger than the recipe intended, so my shortbread's gonna be a little bit thinner. But let's pour that mix into the pan, spread it out, and bake it for 25 minutes. Next, we're gonna make the caramel filling for our shortbread. We're gonna need sweetened condensed milk, brown sugar, butter, and salt. After adjusting the camera, we're going to use the same pan from earlier and melt 3 eighths of a cup of butter. We're going to add one can of condensed milk and mix it all up until it's smooth. Adding in half a cup of brown sugar, we're going to keep on mixing for a few minutes until everything is combined. Then add in half a teaspoon of salt and just keep mixing it. It's gonna be smooth, it's gonna be silky, it's gonna thicken a little bit over time. Take the shortbread crust out of the oven, pour the caramel over the crust, spread it out over the pan, and then we'll put it back into the oven for another 20 minutes. It came out bubbling a little bit, so I let it cool down for about half an hour before transferring it to the fridge just to cool it more, because you want your caramel to completely cool down before adding the next layer. And when it is completely cooled down, we're gonna make the final layer, the chocolate ganache. Let's start with heating up some heavy cream in the pot over low heat. Once it starts to bubble, add in some chocolate. You can also microwave your chocolate and mix it in the cream in the bowl. But I don't have a microwave, so I'm gonna keep mixing and adding in the chocolate until I get that creamy consistency. You're gonna wanna drink it, but you'll have to restrain yourself, otherwise you're gonna end up drinking the whole pot and then you won't have a chocolate ganache layer anymore. Here's our cooled down caramel and crust bases. Let's pour our chocolate ganache over the caramel, spread it out evenly, tap it to remove any air bubbles, and place it back into the fridge for a few hours or overnight. It is now the next day and I am still wearing the same clothes. Here's our almost ready millionaire shortbread. You can try cutting it with a pizza roller, but for me, it didn't work because my shortbread was a little too hard. Instead, I'm going to use a big knife to chop it up into squares or rectangles if you didn't use a square pan. Time to plate our beautiful squared up millionaire shortbread. Clean it up a bit like you're a meal in Ratatouille in that one scene. And voila, our millionaire shortbread. Of course, a slow-mo shot for good luck. This tastes so good. It's a clear member of the Clean Plate Club. You can make these for your niece's baptism reception, your book club, whatever you want. I highly recommend that you try making these. 